In this mini tutorial, I hope to give you an overview of selection techniques or masking techniques as it's sometimes called. When you paint in Photoshop or retouch your artwork and create fantastic effects, you'll find yourself wanting to isolate certain parts of your artwork to either silhouette it or combine it with other artwork. To isolate these objects, you need to select or mask them. The old way before digital imaging involved cutting masks in the shape of the object using opaque material like cardboard or floppy overlays called rubylith or amberlith. The idea was to mask out the rest of the artwork while keeping the selected artwork open for further editing. And as with everything else in Photoshop, we have lots of different tools and functions that are dedicated to making these selections or masks. You can use any of the selection tools such as the lasso tools or the pen tools or marquees to directly select objects. You can select an object by a particular attribute such as similar tones in an image or by its color or range of colors. You have access to intuitive ways of making a selection such as painting on masks such as the quick mask mode or creating layer masks that are saved with the file. In this section we'll explore all of these different ways to produce the most efficient selections that are also very creatively conceived and are built smart. There are two things that I hope to cover in this introductory lesson. I want to give you a broad overview of the specific tools and techniques that are used in these different selection categories that I mentioned. But most of all, I want to start you off with some of my personal ideas or strategies for how these selections should be approached. When you start down this path, you're better off thinking about what you want selected at the end, rather than thinking that you need to start selecting a particular shape or object. When you start thinking about what you want to end up with as a selection, I think it helps to identify all the combinations of tools and techniques that you can use to achieve a brilliant selection. For example, to isolate the statue, this is the process that I would follow. I'll begin by drawing a rough selection around the object with a marquee tool or a lasso. This helps to limit the variation in the background. And you can also go ahead and use the Shift key or the Option key or the Alt key to add or subtract from the selection. They're great selection modifier tools. Now I'll switch the Magic Wand or the Color Range command. I'll set an appropriate tolerance and make sure that I uncheck Contiguous. This helps if the background shows up through any openings in the object itself, like through the branches of a tree, for instance. Then hold down the Option or the Alt key and click outside the selection. The idea is to close around the selection. You can even lower the tolerance around similar colors so that it can sense a sharper and cleaner edge. Click until you have the complete area selected. And this was a very simple illustration, but you saw that we ended up using a couple of different tools to end up with our selection. Now you might want to save this selection to reuse later on. I like to control click or right click at the very same time to save the selection. or I might float the selected pixels to their own layer for future use. To do this, right or control click and choose layer via copy and name the layer statue. And this is what you would end up with in the layers palette. If I click on the channels tab, this is what the raw selection mask looks like. Just black and white in this case showing the selected areas in white and the masked out or the opaque areas in black. Saving a selection also lets you edit it further. I can zoom, I can pan, I can use all of my painting and editing tools to refine my mask further. 
You can now use a painting tool, for instance, to further refine the areas that are selected and block out the areas that should not be selected but are in this case. All you have to remember to do is the part of the selection that needs to be selected needs to be painted white and the part that needs to be masked out will be painted in black. Now make sure that your opacity is set to 100% or you risk painting in a shade of gray. What this implies is a shade of transparency in the selection. Grays are deliberately used to create soft edged masks and transitions so you want to make sure that you paint in black or white when you want a crisp edge or a hard edge to the selected objects. If you make a mistake and paint in black on areas that need to be selected, it's very easy to fix it. All you do is you switch your colors and start painting in white. In this case, you might want to work with a smaller sized brush and again making sure that it's a nice hard edge. You can just paint right in and fix the area right there. And here I ended up with a selection mask that is much more refined than what I started out with simply by painting in the areas that needed to be selected in white and blocking out the areas that were partially selected or speckled in black. Now when I'm ready to use this particular selection mask all I do is load this channel and then proceed to silhouette the statue by perhaps adding a different sky in the background or changing the colors or adding clouds. So there's a number of things you can do with a finely crafted selection mask like this.